But first, now the Celtic Stadium behind us is massive, but it wasn't quite big enough for the track and field events. So they thought, I know what we'll do. We'll move to another stadium across town called Hamden Park. Yeah, and they came up with the most brilliant idea, as Marty Jobson explains. This is Hamden Park in Glasgow. For over a century, it's been the home of Scottish football. And this summer, it will host athletics at the Commonwealth Games. As the league comes through. But Hamden has one major drawback. There's no running track here and no space to build one. So the organisers came up with a radical solution. An entire track built on stilts, two metres above the football pitch. Eight months ago, 10,000 lower level seats were removed to make way for the huge platform above the pitch. It was an ambitious method never attempted before on this scale. Why use this method? Why not just build a new stadium? Well, the disadvantage of building a new stadium is the cost. You also have the problem with, if you build a new stadium, what do you do with it afterwards? So they've come up with this idea, and this idea has come in at a fraction of the cost. The new track has cost £14 million to complete. That's a bargain, as a new stadium can cost hundreds of millions of pounds. But building an entire racing track on stilts poses a huge problem, a problem famously recognised nearly 200 years ago in a village outside Manchester. In 1831, British soldiers were marching across the Broughton Suspension Bridge when it began to sway in time with their footsteps. Bemusement quickly turned to horror, though, as the bridge collapsed, seriously injuring 20 soldiers. The bridge failed not because of their combined weight, but because of the vibrations caused by their footsteps. Every object, like this glass, will vibrate at its own specific frequency. This is called its resonant frequency. And when something makes it wobble at that frequency, it puts it under stress. Sometimes causing it to break. And it's not only sound that can have this effect. It could be pounding feet or even the wind. In 1940, the wind made the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington State wobble so much that it collapsed. An athletics track on stilts is essentially a bridge and could wobble like one. And for elite athletes like Usain Bolt and Mo Farah, even a slight wobble could mean the difference between success and failure. One runner on their own couldn't make the track vibrate. But many running at the same time just might. The solution was to build a track with a frequency that neither the athletes nor the noise of the crowd would be able to mimic. What's needed is weight. Adding extra weight on top of the stilts makes it impossible for a group of runners to generate the frequency needed to make the track wobble. Above my head, they've piled an amazing amount of weight, an astonishing 17,000 tonnes. On top of the stilts, the workers lay down a thousand huge steel plates. Then they add a deep layer of solid rock. On top of that, they put a layer of tar, then a layer of asphalt to make the whole thing perfectly level. The synthetic racing surface is the final layer. And before you know it, you have a running track that will never be shaken. Putting the track through its paces today is Commonwealth contender Ailish McColgan, daughter of Commonwealth champion Liz McColgan. Can you tell when you're running on this track that you're not on solid ground, that you're two metres off the ground? No, I mean, I wouldn't have a clue. The only reason I know is obviously I've seen the pictures, I've seen the construction and I've seen how high it is off the ground, but yeah, it just feels like a completely normal track. So it's, uh, it's a little bit of a, a weird experience. And the home crowd, for one, hope that Hamden's temporary track in the sky creates victories that will last forever. Apparently it's a very hard track, which means that it's really fast, so expect records to go. That's how it works, is it? Yeah, Good. that's it. Well, All yeah, right. apparently. Um, we are joined now by sport historian uh, Philip Barker. My first question, Philip.